Well, good morning. I want to welcome everyone here today. Um, you're all welcome. There are plenty of seats here. Um, one of the uh, priorities that I've had as mayor has been to return to basic services. And uh, one of the pieces of basic service, I think, is communication. How does the city government make sure that it communicates well with its citizens, listens well, is easy to understand, and particularly is easy to access? And we've made some progress. We've launched 684 CITY. We've added Saturday hours to some of our neighborhood service centers and evening hours at others so people can do business with the city at times that are convenient for them, uh, not on the city's time. Uh, today, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Council Member Jim Compton uh, and members of the Seattle Commission on Electronic Communication to give a preview of some uh, changes that we're going to make, some improvements in the city's use of two of the most powerful communications tools ever invented, the internet and television. We're going to give you a preview of what you can uh, expect to be launched in the fall. It's a little bit like network television telling you about the new fall lineup. Um, people have very busy lives. Uh, they need to find uh, ways to participate with their government that uh, does not um, necessarily uh, take place on government's time, but rather suits the citizens' needs and desires. With two new technology, you don't need to come downtown in order to participate in your government. You can do it from home in your slippers. Government should adopt your schedule, not the other way around. And the city is moving in that direction. Uh, and because the budget is tight, we're going to do it within existing resources. Uh, on the TV channel, new network news programs will begin this summer. On the web, live stre streaming of council meetings will begin again this summer. And this fall, we're going to combine television and web programming and launch an MSNBC style service complete with interactive polling, live broadcasts from neighborhoods or community meetings, uh, and live uh, online discussion during council meetings. Uh, I want to acknowledge the leadership of Council Member Jim Compton in this effort. A year ago this month, uh, Council Member Compton and former Mayor Schell brought together the commission uh, and asked them to advise the city on directions for the future. I'm going to ask uh, Jim to talk a little bit about the history of how this happened and where we're going in the future. Council Member? Well, this is, um, this is a thrill for me, and this was not an ordinary bunch of people we brought together. These are some of the best and brightest that we could find in this community. And I, I, without getting too carried away, this is some of the most important work we will ever do in City Hall. It's, the, the challenge we have is how do we overcome people's alienation from government? And how do we deal with their growing indifference and their even con their contempt in some cases for institutions and for the political process? You know, I always, uh, in talking to students, I, I use the quote from, uh, from uh, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who said that uh, information is power and that the first thing you do is take over the radio station. Literally, the rev in the revolution, the first thing you do is take over the radio station. Well, if information is power, then we have to give it to our citizens. We have to give strong, credible information to the citizens of the city of Seattle that will empower them to participate in the political process. And we have to find a way that they can get their voices back to us. And that's what this is all about. The report, I commend to you the, a careful reading of this report because this is about as good a document as you'll find as a, a, a sort of a manifesto for what we can do with, with uh, municipal communication. Or somebody said this morning, it's not about municipal communication, it's about community. It's about getting people within the, the community to talk to one another. The mayor, uh, and I, I want to thank the mayor in, in, in the deepest way possible for embracing this report and saying that uh, he shares the feeling that this is uh, important to the city. Um, with his help, I think we can really get somewhere with this. Uh, he's made the point, and I'll make it again, that we have to go where people are. We can no longer insult people by saying that uh, if you want to have a voice in government, you can come on downtown, find a way to park your car, and then come to City Hall to speak up. It shouldn't be that way. We have to find a way to use the new technology to bring people's voices into government. Um, we can no longer uh, send out uh, press releases on colored re paper. Remember when that was the state of the art? <laughs> send colored paper and they'll figure out it's important. 
And even fax is more and more out of date. There, we have to use the new technology. Um, people, particularly young people, are on using TV, they're using the web, and they're using cable to, to inform themselves about their civic life. Um, I've given this the name the democracy portal. Um, there's a reason for that. I, I think of this in terms of opening the door of City Hall, opening the democracy portal to let information out, but also to let information back in and to hear from people about what they want us to hear about government. Um, this isn't simply about putting money into TV or into the web on the part of the city, the city of Seattle. These are times in which we, we as, as a friend of mine likes to say, we don't have two nickels to rub together in, the, in City Hall. But it is about putting new ideas into our, the way we communicate. And um, we need a technical upgrade for sure, but more than that, we need an ideas upgrade that says we will rethink the way we do things and use the existing resources to communicate much more effectively. There's, without going on too much farther, interactivity is, is the name of the game. To allow people to speak to City Hall through their television set and the set-top box and through the web. We have to find ways to do that. We have to steal the, the best techniques from commercial TV. That's branding. They have to, have to know where to go to find stuff. They have to know that, that high production values will prevail. I always say that the city council currently looks like it's broadcasting from a mortuary, and uh, it shouldn't take too much to fix that. Um, we, and we have to give them interesting programming. There has to be a reason to go there. We have to give a human face to technology, but we have to be very sure that, they're, that it's a real human face and that there are human beings behind that that you can reach, that you not have the frustration of, uh, you know, touch, uh, touch nine if you want to blow up City Hall is the way I often feel when I when I get some of the phone mail tr trees or whatever they're called. So uh, let me thank the, the commission for its extraordinary work. Steve Clifford, who, yes, was my former boss, but I think he kept everybody on time and on schedule and on task. The Cocker Fennessy firm, the consultants, did a superb job, I think, of keeping us working. And look at the people participating, Town Hall, Microsoft, Real Networks. Uh, this was a really it was a bang up bunch of people, and I can't thank you enough for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Compton knows a little bit about the media and broadcasting and journalism, and I think brought a particular uh, vision to this uh, process. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the chairman of the commission, Steve Clifford, uh, isn't with us today. He's uh, in New York City. But I want to thank all the commission members, a number of whom are with us today, <coughs> uh, for their work. And I'd like to introduce uh, two of the members who are going to talk a little bit about what the commission uh, did and. Uh, where we're headed with this. Bill Kazarba uh, is Executive News Director of Northwest Cable News, and David Brewster, who's Executive Director of Town Hall. Welcome and come on forward. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in the commission. And one thing that I, I, I wanted to really point out is 12 years ago, I came to Seattle from CNN or seven years ago after 12 years at CNN. And uh, under the brainchild the Providence Journal had of linking the cities of the Northwest together uh, with our television stations throughout the Northwest, uh, we walked into an empty room, we put something together, and now it's a profitable venture that I hope has some influence. Um, because of the partnership of the channels, it w became a success. Three years ago, Velo, who bought the company, decided that the internet was an important part of the process and, over the, and decided to invest in it. And over the three-year period, King5.com has become the number one news website in America for a website connected with a television station. When I became part of this commission and was honored to ask to, be do, so, uh, to do so, what I saw was a group of people that were way ahead of any of the industry leaders that I had worked with. We're not starting off with an empty room. We're starting off with an established government, an established channel, and an established website. And what I think is exciting about this process is now it's time to take it to the next level. And I think that you've gotten the very best and the brightest to suggest of where that's going to go. And you're going to see the result of that. And you're going to see the synergy of having government and people work together. Because what's been missing in government, in a lot of ways, has been the two-way street. So from me, I'd like to thank the mayor for embracing 
the council's recommendations and for the council members for putting so much effort into this and to having a result that I think is top drawer and some of the best in the industry. Thank you, Mayor, for, uh, for uh, embracing this and getting it started. Um, these are very good first steps um, uh, with the relaunch uh, of the website and the channel, um, particularly in this fall. One of the advantages we found was that they are integrated already, um, which is a key to um, using the strengths of both television and the web technology. Uh, we found a lot of strength in uh, TBC. Um, very good people working at that, getting an enormous amount out of these uh, few nickels that, that they've had up, up to this point. <laughs> and um, and uh, we also found, not surprisingly, that Seattle is a terrific city to be, I think, the leader in what we might call this uh, municipal uh, channel, uh, democracy portal approach. Uh, there is uh, great technological sophistication here, um, as, as is obvious. There is uh, great media idealism as well as ideas that are looking for outlets to do more experimentation. Uh, as Norm Langell was uh, a constant advocate for that, you've got, you've got flexible, easy technology that can go to unusual places uh, that lie under the radar of conventional media, places where imagination exists where people are and where the discourse is authentic and lively and genuine. Um, so it's very rich with promise and um, it's nice to see the city embracing this idea as strongly as it does and obviously the city gets some real advantages from that. Uh, good feedback from people uh, and a way of putting forth the ideas unmediated by uh, uh, enabling people to see democracy in progress. At Town Hall we did um, 13 forums in the last uh, half year on the international crisis um, and uh, bringing interesting people from around the country um, uh, including some of the great resources in this area on international understanding. Big crowds um, wonderful events, electric in many ways. Um, TVC covered every one of them. Uh, 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 thousands of people were able to see this in addition to the thousands who came there because cable TV was there, as were other cable channels. Um, uh, going out to where uh, discourse is happening, going out to where the community is gathering, which uh, the new technology really makes possible. Uh, affordably uh, recording this, archiving this, and broadcasting it live is a tremendous gift to the community as well as to organizations such as Town Hall who are set up in order to enrich live thinking in public uh, and bringing back these traditions of making decisions in community by hearing all kinds of different voices. One other thing that is exciting, and that is the, uh, about Seattle and about this new technology, is the cultural richness of this community. Um, we know about the artistic richness. It's an unusual city in that way. Uh, we're getting to know more about the uh, different cultures of ethnicity and their culture in this community. Uh, they need stages, uh, they need audiences, they need ways of bringing that rich culture to all of the cultures of the city. And so the kinds of things with which the remote broadcast uh, now will be able to do, uh, uh, evenings of Vietnamese love songs um, uh, on the stage at Town Hall is one thing we've done. The kinds of tremendous activity going on at Seattle Center in which uh, we come to understand the cultural richness. This is a vibrant, pluralistic democracy and here we have one of the most powerful tools for people to understand that in their bones every day and uh, in a way that is, that is very convenient. So it's been thrilling to be a part of this and uh, we're going to keep the council and the mayor on track 
and making sure that these first commitments uh, end up in a few short years in Seattle, among its many distinctions of having the finest such channel um, in the country. Thanks a lot. Thank you, David. I'd also like to acknowledge the other members of the commission who are here. Norm Langell, who is president of One Real Productions. Uh, Margot Gordon, who is a professor and dean emeritus for the uh, University of Washington's Evans School of Public Affairs. Uh, and Jean Walkinshaw, uh, who is a documentary film producer at KCTS Television. So thank you for your great work on this. And now we're going to have a, uh, a little bit of a before and after uh, presentation, assuming that the technology works, which we are assuming. <laughs> This, I'm told, is the old. <laughs> and, and, but as a former council member, I find this fascinating. <laughs> and and good, good television. When we view Seattle's skyline, we are seeing not only the buildings here today, but the vision of people who came here 15 decades ago, hoping to carve from the dense forests, mountains, and nature a better life. Hello, I'm Galen Goff, and welcome to Seattle Focus. This month, we're commemorating the birth of Seattle. So I'm here at the Museum of History and Industry to give you a peek at a fascinating new exhibit reflecting the rich heritage of our city and the diverse contributions of its people. Historian Walt Crowley will introduce you to some of Seattle's pioneers with a trip back to the city's birthplace. Next, we'll join Kelly Gunther for a walk along a trail paved with memories of the early years of West Seattle. We'll visit the Log House Museum for a talk with a descendant of Chief Seattle. And we'll view the restoration of an historic, once missing mural. Have we lost control? Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then actually, uh, what I can show you over here is a prototype of the website. Same video. And this can be either a live council meeting um, or it could be the channel signal as it's coming out um, or perhaps even a, an archive video that you pick out because you're interested in a particular piece. Um, and I really do want to thank Microsoft Studios that um, invited us over and, and this is something we put together in a day. Um, work with us and help us put together this prototype. We've got uh, polling. Uh, so the, this is this is just a prototype here, but uh, you go there. It might show you previous polls. Um, we have some made up these uh -huh. <laughs> um, figures, and uh, here is an example of where you might pull up a video and then um, get other information, um, get related videos. Um, these videos eventually will be. Um, set up so that you can go directly to the particular part of the information that you want. You don't necessarily have to listen to the whole thing. So if you're interested in a, a particular topic that the city council is talking about and uh, you know it's on a meeting, uh, we will eventually be able to let you go and just click on that and you can skip all the boring stuff and go directly to the issue that you're interested in. Um, this is obviously a goal. Mm -hmm. um, take us some time to get there, but very uh, exciting, and I think you'll see this fall, uh, quite a lot of this is going to be... Are you seeing Lord as well as ever? Well, they thought I kind of looked like her, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Thank you, Rona. And uh, we'd be happy to take any questions. I do note that there are uh, none of the commercial television news stations are here. I think they hear footsteps, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Well, great. Uh, Mark, yeah. Um, you say this is about democracy. How is this two-way? How, how do citizens communicate with you? Well, Rona, you want to point out some of the features on here? Uh, yeah. And um, actually, could you speak over here back. by the mic? Please. Oh, yeah. 
there are going to be a number of different ways that citizens are going to be able to communicate with government. Um, one that I showed you are the polls, for example. So when the city is um, taking up an issue, um, we're going to let people poll. Um, we are also going to have uh, events, interactive events, um, so that there might be a live chat with the mayor. Um, he's pretty sophisticated at using technology, and um, we might invite people to one of our community technology centers um, and have them conduct a chat with the mayor or the city council. Um, we've already uh, started piloting, in a couple of cases, um, live interactive public hearings with the city council, um, where some people show up in person, some people call, um, and some people email their questions. Um, Councilmember Compton's uh, committee meeting actually is broadcast live, and it's video streamed live on the web right now. So if you have something to say uh, during his meeting, you can actually email um, a comment, and then we'll receive it during the meeting. So we're going to begin yeah. to put those sort of things in place. The, the interesting thing, when we first streamed out my committee, and, I, and George Allen, who's my chief of staff, gets the credit for this, we streamed it out and invited people to send emails, and we got, was it six? Oh, no, we had 60 people logged on, and I have to believe only half of those were my relatives and George's relatives. So it was, uh, it's, it's really pretty remarkable that people use this, and they send emails and say, please ask Compton, blah, 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 you know, they send the emails. But to answer your question, there's a blizzard of interactivity going on out there. The city has to simply plug into it and to some, somehow has to become a player in this interactive world and to say that if people are talking to themselves all over the web and, and now more and more using the set-top box to talk back to, to television, um, we have to be a part of that. and we, we want to get right on the frontier and maybe even invent some ways that it could be done better. But doesn't that put you in the situation that you alluded to with voicemail that eventually if too, too many people respond, you're going to be overwhelmed? Uh, go ahead. Uh, well, no, I, I, I think we're giving people choices. And remember that my, my motive in this is, is simply that so many people are so alienated from government that if we can find a way to give a human face to government and to say, hey, we're doing your potholes, or did you know that Seattle Public Utilities does all these remarkable things for you? or give people an opportunity to talk back on, about a tax increase and those sorts of things, that we're, we're giving credibility to government by saying we listen. We, we're willing to have you come to the table and hear the information that's going on. And secondly, we want you to talk back to us. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. If you think about the evolution over the last 10 years, uh, as I was a member of the, the county council, the only way when I first became a member of the county council someone could interact with their government was to take a day off of work and come to a council meeting. Um, and uh, there was no such thing as email. Today you, you can get that information real time in your own home, um, convenient to you, and you can respond, telephone, uh, obviously fax, uh, voicemail, uh, email and uh, interactive tools uh, such as these. So the ways that we interact are our own choice, but they're becoming uh, more uh, plentiful, more available, and more immediate. How much does all this cost to just set up, and how much will it cost to maintain? I'm going to let Rona tell us about the budget, <laughs> but we're doing it within our existing. Uh, we're not going to ask for additional resources to do this, but obviously there's, some, there's effort involved. Um, that's right. Um, our total budget for the TV channel um, is just about a million dollars a year, um, and we're um, reallocating existing resources um, and pulling some folks from the city web team together. Um, obviously, the more we have, the more we can do, but we're going to launch this with existing resources, and um, hopefully so many people will use it and love it, but um, that will help us get partnerships and other things to bring more resources to the table. Sure. How, what kind of a computer will someone need to use this? I mean, what speed, how much memory, what kind of software? I assume Microsoft software. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, we use real networks, um, streaming software rather than Microsoft. Um, they won't need any particular kind of computer to do this. It is true that to watch a video, it's um, much better quality to have a high-speed internet connection. Um, we have an extraordinary number of people in this community that actually have high-speed internet connections. Um, at home, probably in the range of 50,000, um, plus all the people at work. Um, but you can also use it with a slow connection. It's just kind of a little 
jerky. So you don't need any kind of special equipment or you don't need to go out and buy anything in order to be able to access the system. Let me just say, the, the, to answer your cost question, the cost of the technology is coming down so fast that um, means of collecting information that used to be, you know, the province of, of network affiliate TV stations are things that, you know, a, a relatively small investment will allow you to do. I don't know if Bill would confirm this, but it used to cost, what, about $100,000 to put a camera in a car and a, a, a photographer on the street. Now you can buy that same camera for three or $4,000, and it can be edited, the material can be edited on a desktop. And that's what's thrilling about this, is that if we can take advantage of that technological leap and somehow empower the city and its, its uh, information systems to use the low-cost technologies, we've really done something. That million dollars used to allocate it for the television station, is that also going to take care of the maintenance of the website? Because things crash. <laughs> yeah, we also have um, a web team, central web team, and they're going to pitch in and, and help with that. And that's what uh, it, it's not within the million dollars, but it's within the same like work unit. Um, no additional funding for that. On the question yeah. of funding, it looks like you didn't get off to a very good start. According to this, the $400,000 that was included for 2002 has been reduced. And they're also talking about a budget of two to $4 million by 2004. How realistic is that given present budget situation for the city? Well, we're taking small initial steps, and we're going to see how that works, and uh, we're going to do it within the existing resources that we have, uh, recognizing that we're in a recession and that uh, we're in tough times. So uh, we'll grow this as our resources allow us to do that. Uh, there is a vision in here. It's a long-term vision. It's one that we're committed to achieving, but we're going to make sure we do it uh, as we can afford to do it. So can you say what that will mean by the end of this year? I, I can't. I, if you could tell me when the recession will end, uh, I can tell you when we can take even bigger steps forward. But this, this report is talking about a democracy portal by fall. Are you going to achieve that? We're going to take some of the initial yeah. steps. Yeah, yep. a lot of the, 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 uh, the initial stuff is, is going to happen within the existing budget. And I think what's remarkable is that, that TVC and, and the website have been held harmless pretty much so far. I mean, in a, in a recession like this, I think it's remarkable that the city has preserved the resources we have for TVC. So I, I'm confident a lot of these initial steps can happen, but it's, it'll be, as the mayor says, it's, uh, it's going to take time now because of the city's resources being so curtailed. Uh, let me thank the mayor again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. And this was, uh, work. I really appreciate your, your hard work in, in embracing this. And thank you also to the commission members. Good. Thanks. Good.